Hey everybody, uh, Paul Lake here with another Physics Problem Solved. And this is the YouTube channel where I solve the physics homework problems provided uh, to me by my tutoring clients. And check out the video description below for a way to get in contact with me if you would like some private tutoring. My rates are reasonable and I'm really good at this. So, uh, hey, let's get started on today's problem. So, let's read it. Uh, it says... Uh, Suppose the force acting on a tennis ball with a mass of 0 0.060 kilograms points in the positive x direction and is given by the graph below as a function of time. Use graphical methods, counting squares, to estimate the total impulse given the ball. Uh, and then B, estimate the velocity of the ball after being struck, assuming the ball is being served, so it's nearly at rest initially. So uh, initial velocity of the ball is zero. Now here's what you uh, what you should be familiar with to try this problem. You should be kind of familiar with the impulse momentum theorem, or at least what the definition of impulse and momentum are, and you should be uh, familiar with uh, you know calculating the area underneath graphs and what what that means. But you know we'll we'll go over this. We'll go over all of this stuff as I solve this problem. But uh, hey, why don't you give this problem a try before we get started, and uh, pause the video, try it yourself and uh, unpause and compare your answers with mine. So let's get started. So this is what's given. We have this uh, force as a function of time graph, and we're also given the uh, mass of the object is 0 0.060 kilograms. Um, and what are we trying to find? Well, using uh, graphical methods, we want to estimate the total impulse given the ball. So we now, uh, so for part A, um, I'm going to use capital J with a vector hat on it to represent impulse. Now, not all books do that. Some books don't even have a variable for impulse. They just call it, you know, force times time. They just use the equation. Um, but this is going to represent impulse. And so we'll talk about what impulse is here in a minute. And then for part B, we can, if you know the impulse, you can figure out using the impulse momentum theorem what the change in momentum is. And if you know the mass and the initial velocity, you can figure out the final velocity. All right, so let's, uh, let's get started. Let's solve it. So I'll back out here a little bit. Now, whenever you have a quantity that is the product of another quantity, you can use the area of the graph where you, you plot one quantity as a function of the other, uh, and the area underneath that graph represents the quantity that is the product of the two other quantities. Now you've you've done this before, right? Right? Remember when you when you did kinematics, if you if you had velocity as a function of time, let's say you had a you know, velocity that maybe went up like this and then stayed constant. Remember that velocity times time is displacement, right? So you said delta x equals velocity times time. And and so, you know, so, you know, delta x equals velocity times time. Um, but of course, this velocity is varying. So this really isn't quite proper. But what I am saying is this, is that this quantity, delta x, is the product of velocity times time. And so when you plot velocity as a function of time, the area underneath it is that. And we did the same thing with um, acceleration and time. Remember, if you had a constant acceleration problem or something like that, the area underneath this graph is a change in velocity, right? Change in velocity is equal to acceleration times time. Here's a product of two quantities. I graph this quantity as a function of this quantity. And this third one is that. A uh, final example, um, if you're doing momentum, you've probably already done work. Remember when we had force as a function of position? So maybe you have something like this, like a trapezoid or something. And the area underneath here Right, we had work is equal to force times displacement or whatever. And so 
this area right here represented the work that was done by the force. Okay, so anytime you have a quantity that is uh, defined to be the product of two other quantities, then the area underneath the graph where you plot one as a function of the other is that their quantity. And this is kind of the foundations of, of uh, integral calculus, by the way. So if you're in a calculus class, that's what we're doing here. We're doing a little bit of calculus. Now, for this graph, um, we have force times time, and we know that impulse is equal to force times time. Now, the force is not a constant here. We have a varying force. So, I mean, we could express this in terms of integrals, but most of you probably haven't had integral calculus yet. So I'm just going to say that, hey, you know, the area underneath this graph represents this product of force as a function of time. All right. So let's count the squares. That's what they told us to do. Well, if I go, and now this is an estimate, okay? So if, if, if you do this independently and you're off a little bit from me, that's okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five squares in that middle column. And here's a fraction. Maybe they add us up to a fourth, maybe half, maybe. Um, so, so one, two, three, three, maybe four, I'll say four and a half. That might be a little bit high. What I'm doing is I'm adding up all of this plus all of this on the side here. And then we have this little corner. Looks like about a fourth in this corner, a little about a fourth. So maybe 0.5. I have a feeling when I look at this, this might be an overestimation a little bit, but not by much. Not by much. This is an estimate. And, and I like this because it adds up to 10 squares. Makes things a little easier. Now, what does each square represent? If I look at this square, and from here to here is 0 0.01 seconds, and from here to here is, when I read it off the graph, well, this is 50 newtons, right? From here, this is 0, this is 100, so 1 square up, that's, that's uh, 50, right? So each of these little squares represents this product, 50 newtons times 0.01 seconds. Um, let's see, uh, 50 times 0.1 is 5, times 0.01 is 0.5. So this is 0 0.5 newton seconds for each square. So this represents an imp the impulse um, here. And, and by the way, this is very common. Um, we're using, you know, you usually think of area, right, as, as a length times a length. Well, this is not a length, but we're using a length to represent a length. And the height here is not a length, but we're using a length to represent a force, 0.5, uh, or uh, 50 newtons, not 0.5 newtons, but 50 newtons. And so it shouldn't surprise us that if, uh, that the area here is not like square meters or square centimeters, or right? It's, it's the product of newtons times seconds. And there we go. So it's an abstraction. So if we have 10 squares, we're estimating that the area underneath here is 10. It might be a little bit less, but that's okay. And we know that one square represents 0 0.5 Newton seconds of impulse. That means that the impulse, the total impulse um, provided to the um, tennis ball is uh, five. Five Newton seconds of impulse. Okay, and that's my answer to part A. And it's positive, it's to the right, it's to the right. Okay, now let me shrink this down a little bit. Okay, all right. So let's do part B, and now we're gonna use the impulse momentum theorem. And the impulse momentum theorem says this, hey, the impulse on an object is equal to the change in momentum of an object. You need to know that. It's a fairly simple thing to, to show why it's true. I, um, I have videos that, that, that do that, and so do a thousand other people on, on YouTube. But uh, in, the impulse momentum theorem is that if you provide an impulse to an object, that will be equal to the change in momentum of that object. Well, the impulse is the area underneath the graph 
um, and uh, which we know is five newton seconds. So we know what the impulse is. Now, change in momentum, well, that's really, the, we have a constant mass here. The, the mass of the tennis ball is not going to change. So the way we change the momentum is by changing the velocity. And so we have here the mass times the change in velocity. That's V uh, final minus V initial. Whenever you see a delta V, that's that's what we do. And then we notice, hey, uh, here's what we're trying to find. That's kind of nice for part B. And um, do I know the initial velocity? Oh, yeah, I didn't write it down in here, but it said, uh, assuming the ball is served so it is nearly at rest initially. So we're going to say, um, you know, V naught equals zero. So that's equal. So initial velocity is equal to zero. Same thing as V, v naught. And then, uh, so now we can solve for this final velocity. So the final velocity in this in this problem is just the impulse divided by the mass. Well, the impulse is, we found it to be 5 newton seconds. And then we're going to divide it by the mass, which uh, is given to be 0 0.060 kilograms. Okay. And when we do the arithmetic, 5 divided by 0 0.06 we get 83.3, and of course the units for velocity are meters per second, and it's positive, that means the final velocity is gonna be in the positive direction. Okay, so that's that's my answer for V final, and so now I'm done with the problem. Now one thing, we have a Newton seconds per kilogram here. Uh, how do I get meters per second out of that? Let's check out those units. Well. Uh, we have Newton seconds per kilogram. Well, a Newton, remember, a Newton is, is force, right? Is force equals mass times acceleration. So a Newton is mass times acceleration, kilogram meters per second squared, times seconds divided by kilograms from, from here. And notice, oh, the kilograms cancels the kilograms. The second cancels with the second squared, and I'm left with just meters per second, which is what my quantity is measured in. And there you go. A physics problem solved all the way through. Okay, hey, if you found this useful, uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you're a physics student, um, why don't you subscribe to my YouTube channel? Um, cause I, I, and you can even in the comments, if you have a problem you'd like me to solve and make a video out of, leave it in the comments and I'll, I'll, I'll try and get to it. And if you have friends that are, um, also, uh, struggling in, in physics, we all struggle with physics. Why don't you share it, share it with them. So anyway, uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, and, uh, Hey, may the net force be with you always.